Welcome back, everybody, to Volatility Trading Strategies and what I feel is a very important volatility lingo video because it's on a subject that I feel is very often overlooked by investors, and that is correlation. Many investors out there, they do understand the importance of having a diversified portfolio with several different asset classes or strategies. It spreads out the risk and is meant to protect the portfolio during down periods, which of course we all have. It doesn't matter how good your portfolio is. You're going to have periods where things just aren't working out as planned, and that's where being diversified will help. But how exactly do we do that? Do we just pick things that sound different? I mean, equities and real estate, they do sound like different asset classes. But are they really? Do they really behave differently through different market environments? If you're a crypto investor, should you hold just one of them, maybe Bitcoin? Or is there benefit to holding a diversified portfolio of several? The only way to know that is to actually calculate the correlation. Not just how things sound or how they appear, but really diving into the numbers, which is what we're going to do today. And really quick, if you want to go far beyond these basic terms and actually see my live trades and follow my real portfolio, there's a no obligation free trial on my website you can claim anytime. You'll see firsthand if the VTS community is right for your long-term investing goals. So first we'll cover what correlation actually is, then I'll show you how to calculate it, and finally I'll give you a few examples of how to actually use it. All right, so correlation is represented on a spectrum that ranges from plus one to minus one. And you may often also hear it represented as a percentage, which would range from 100% to minus 100%. So a correlation of one or 100% means that the two securities or assets being measured are perfectly positively correlated to one another. That means they always move in the same direction. When one of them goes up, the other one also always goes up, and vice versa. When one of them goes down, the other one also always goes down. A correlation of minus one or minus 100% means that the two securities or assets are perfectly negatively correlated to one another. They move in the opposite direction. When one goes up, the other one always goes down. And when one goes down, the other one always goes up. And lastly, a correlation of zero or zero percent right there in the middle, it means the two assets have no correlation to each other. Now, since very few things are ever perfectly correlated, either positively or negatively, it's mostly going to land somewhere in between those two extremes, and the higher the value or the lower the value, the stronger the correlation is. Essentially, the further away it gets from 0%, the more correlated they are to each other. Now, one thing I want to make perfectly clear, and you've probably heard it said many times before, but correlation does not imply causation. Just because two assets are correlated to one another does not mean that one of them is causing the movements of the other. If we look, we can always find correlations between completely unrelated things. I don't know if this is true or not, I'm just inventing an example to make a point, but it's possible that the price of Tesla stock is correlated to the price of coffee, maybe positively or negatively. But the point is that even if that was true, we shouldn't be tempted to think that Tesla stock is somehow causing price changes in coffee. We're talking about direction only here, not causation. But that doesn't diminish the value of what we're doing. We really do need to know how two things are moving in relation to each other. If we go through an example, you'll know what I mean. Given the fact that so many investors out there hold significant portions of their portfolio in both equities and fixed income, it's very important to know how they move in relation to each other. All right, so here we are inside an Excel spreadsheet, and I'm gonna keep this very simple, but of course later on you can expand on this and apply it to your own portfolio. So when we're trying to find the correlation between two assets, in this case the TLT, which is 20 plus year US Treasuries, comparing that to the SPY, which is the S&P 500 index, all you really need is data and the daily returns. You can also do it on a monthly or a yearly, but I'm using daily in this case. Now there's nothing significant about this date other than March 26, 2004 is when the VIX futures launched. So oftentimes I like to compare correlations going back to the start of the volatility trading that I do. But you know, you can do any dates. I've got data for the S&P and the VIX. Vanguard total bond index going back to 1990, we could compare to the spot gold price, all the cryptos, whatever you want, any asset class applies. All right, so if we want to find the correlation, it's actually very simple. Now, I'm not going to be scrolling down here. I think that might make people dizzy. So I've already said that the end of December 2021 is cell 4475. So in this cell, we're just going to do equals C-O-R-R-E-L for correlation. And then we're just going to highlight the daily returns of one of them. Adjust that for 44.75, highlighting all the way down, put a comma, and we're comparing that to the S&P 500. 
again, to 4475, and that is it. So you can see here the correlation between TLT and SPY is minus 0.4. And like I said before, this can also be viewed as a percentage of minus 40%. It's the same thing. The TLT and the SPY have a negative correlation. Now remember what that number means. Minus 0.4 or minus 40%, it's not a perfect negative correlation, but it does mean that when one of the assets is going up, the other one tends to go down they are tending to move in opposite directions. This is why the classic 60-40 stock bond allocation is such a common benchmark. Holding both of them at the same time is adding mathematical negative correlation, and it does reduce drawdowns during down periods in the stock market. Now, given where interest rates are at these days, scraping the bottom of that long-term range, the jury is out on whether that relationship will still hold going forward. Keep that in mind, correlations can change over time. But either way, we definitely want a much better portfolio than that. And if you follow my work, definitely not buy and hold. But calculating correlations is a major part of all portfolio construction. What about for all you crypto investors out there? I know many of you probably do hold Bitcoin. It's the biggest and therefore arguably the safest among them. But is there any benefit to holding Bitcoin and Ethereum, for example? Or maybe a basket of several different ones? If the correlation is extremely high, then they basically move together in tandem, and it would essentially just be doubling up on the same asset. There would be no point. Sure, they sound different from one another, but we won't actually know until we run the numbers. So again, we're inside Excel and we're gonna do the same calculation just with two different assets. Remember, all you need is the data. So we've got Bitcoin, Ethereum. I mean, if people cared, we could do Doge, we could do XRP. All you really need is the data between two assets. But in this case, Ethereum correlation to Bitcoin. And like I said, sometimes scrolling makes people a little bit sick. So the final sell for January 15th, 2021 is 3184. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna do C-O-R-R-E-L, just like before for correlation. We're gonna start with the Ethereum daily returns, adjust this for 3184, comma, and we're comparing to Bitcoin, remember, for the same time period. So this cell all the way down to 3184. And that's it. So the correlation between these two, Ethereum and Bitcoin, is actually 0.53. And again, same as before, this could also be viewed as 53%. This shows that there is a positive correlation of 53% between Ethereum and Bitcoin on a daily return basis. So given that the correlation between Bitcoin and Ethereum is only 53%, which is actually pretty low considering they're both in the same industry, I would say yes, there is a mathematical benefit to holding both of them in the same portfolio. Correlations confirm that. Now, caveat, that is of course if you believe in their future potential, but mathematically there is risk reduction in holding multiple lower correlated strategies or assets in the same portfolio. That's how this should be viewed. And correlation is also a major consideration for my own portfolio. Now, I mentioned I'm not a buy and hold investor. I trade a diversified portfolio of individual tactical strategies, but the same concept applies. I have to know how they move in relation to each other over time. We currently have five tactical strategies in the portfolio. They're the ones marked in blue there. And since my work at VTS is to create a portfolio that performs well in both bull markets, but also as a full tail risk portfolio that does well in bear markets, I have to make sure that all the strategies have a lower correlation both to each other, but more importantly, also to the S&P 500. Now, it has been a long bull market, so correlations will still be positive, but you can see that I don't trade anything that has a high correlation to the stock market. If I want to crush the stock market, I have to decouple from it. I can't just track it, which means there will be times when maybe stocks are going up and I might not be. But on the flip side, there will also be times when stocks are crashing and maybe I'm making a profit. I don't just want a few good years, I want an exceptional 30 year track record, which means I'm actively designing strategies with lower correlations. It's a major part of my work and responsible for a lot of my success in the last 10 years since I launched VTS in 2012. Correlations are an incredibly important part of effective portfolio management and risk management. But like I said, most investors make the mistake of not actually calculating it. They just think things sound different enough, so they must be adding diversification. Unfortunately, they find out the hard way during a market crash that most of the assets they were holding had high correlations to each other, which means you might have a portfolio with multiple different sounding assets, but they all crash with the stock market anyway. Obviously, we don't want that. So in my opinion, low correlation strategies, especially here in 2022 with valuations where they are, 
that's really where it's at for long-term portfolio stability. And remember, if you want to check out VTS, there is a free trial for everybody on the website so you can check out some live trades to see if it's right for you before committing. See you next time. Thank you so much for watching the video. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and go check out my website right here. There's tons of articles and videos on there, as well as a free trial to join the VTS investing community. What have you got to lose? Come see how I personally navigate these unruly markets. See you next time.